Welcome to Handicap Podcast. Got JP in the house. Hey, what's up? And JP's got a special guest tonight. I'm going to let him introduce him. We got Doug Copeland joining us today from the great city of Kingfisher, Oklahoma. Doug, good evening. Good to have you here. JP. Okay, I guess I should say JP. And That's right. Yeah. JP and Az. Okay. All right. Well, we are, uh, like I said, welcome to Doug. Let's have, have a great chat tonight and talk about his disability journey and what he's gone through and, and everything else. We're glad to have a listener with us. Doug, uh, well, hold on, hold on. We, you, we, you told me that Doug's a big sports guy. He likes sports. He does. Who's your favorite team? Which sport? Football. What's um, pro or college? Uh, we'll start pro. How's that? Dallas. Okay. Well, that, that, <laughs> yay. Yeah, that's all right. We get along then. That's fine. <laughs> yay. That's a good start. Let's okay. go to college. What yeah, about college. college football? Yeah. College football? OSU. OSU. They're going to be good this year? Everybody says they will, but until we get in the game, you never know. That's the truth. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good answer. Well, that, that, we, <clears throat> JP and I were just talking about this on the car ride over, that Sports Illustrated has OSU in the top three Yeah, in the nation going to the playoffs. Yeah. Interesting. And that, to me, that, that was, it was a shocker to me. I well, mean, now, we need to tell the fans when we say OSU, we're talking about Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. State. Right, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, State yeah. for our listeners in Youngstown. Right. Or, or Aggies, what you know, we used to be the Aggies. That's right. Yeah, or as I prefer, the Pokes. The Pokes. <laughs> well, we're, we're Sooner fans, so that we, yeah, okay. we give it give it to the hey, Poke fans all the time. My mom is a Sooner OU grad. My dad's an OSU grad. She had a split house then. Yeah, I mean, it was never no big deal. I mean, in the early seventies, um, we went to OSU and OU football games every Saturday. Oh, did you really? It seemed like it was always. One was away and one was home. So, you know, we had we had season tickets over at OSU for a long time. And then my, some family members had some tickets that were out of town. You know, they lived out of town, so they never used them. So we'd go there. We were set up there in that oh, um, northwest corner. Yeah. Way up high there. Just a few rows from the yeah, top. But right. That, that was fun back then, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, it, even into the 80s, you had a bunch of good OSU football mm-hmm. teams. I mean, I'm talking, you know. Early seventies, as in when Terry Miller and the boys beat. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, you, you know, yeah. Back, you know, we saw not Jack, but um, Davis. You know those guys, Billy. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. You yeah. know, the early guys. The golden age. Of, yeah, get, really. It really. Was, now you yeah. never got in the spelling bee with Dexter Manley while you were there, did you? No. All right. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you know, know Dexter Manley. Oh, yeah. 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 Y- y- y'all want y- y'all want to blame OSU, but. You know, that all started down in school, high school and grade school. And, you know, well, sure it did. Sure. Yeah. You know, that's it, where it's got to start. But, yeah, I mean, by all rights, he shouldn't have been able to been in school. How, how he got in, who knows? But those that was the way things were tough. You know, there were yeah. a lot of things that back went on then. back then that right, did not right. get reported, you know. Oh, yeah. Right. You, know, you probably don't want to talk about the laundry list of stuff of that, that ha- happened at uh, OU. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, you know. Everybody's got a few skeletons in the old closet. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it was common knowledge, you know. If you if a girl showed up the next day with a the football player's jersey, that, that, that's where that, she that's was. That's how she. That's how she. Got, you know. Yeah. <laughs> things that oh, yeah. on. That, that's oh, how yeah. she got that jersey. Oh yeah. Know. Makes sense. Especially the quarterback. You know. Right. 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 So. Yeah. Okay. So, but uh, I'm obviously mainly a football fan. I'm a wrestling fan too. So Oklahoma State's good. Always. Always good wrestling. But what other sports are you? Jason said you. JP said you're it really in the well, all of them. <laughs> all of, you know, basketball, baseball, you know, wrestling. I like OSU wrestling. You know, so I watch tennis. I watch golf. I just watched Justin Thomas win the PGA there today. You know, so I was hoping Ricky. Yeah, Fowler, I didn't watch that. I was hoping I Ricky Fowler it. could do something, but he he did all right. He, he finished at um, five, un, five under, which I think put him about. Fifth or sixth. Hmm. It's pretty good, though. Do they still have a tour stop at Edmond? No. Didn't they, didn't they used to do that? Yeah, they tried it a little bit. I mean, basically, they've just hosted the majors. Yeah. And that, as far as a regular tour stop, and, you know, I, no, I don't think so. I think maybe they might have tried it with the seniors back a few years back. Yeah, they did. Maybe, I mean, just a couple of years there. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah, you know, I don't instant. think they yeah. couldn't get the sponsors or whatever, or, or probably couldn't get the players to commit because – 
you know, they all got certain tournaments they all like to go to. And so uh, let's hear your take on, now we all, I'm on record. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spit on KD if he's on fire. <laughs> That's right. He's on record for that. But uh, what's your thoughts on the KD going to the rival team and if we can switch, if we can switch to, uh, to Naismith's creation? Uh, well, you know, you think about KD, okay, yeah, that's his thing, you know. And then some of the things he's claiming, you know, he said, well, I never had a girlfriend in college like Russell did, or I didn't. Uh-huh. Have, and I'm thinking, nobody kept you from having a girlfriend but right. yourself. You were only in college one year. You only spent one year there. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, no, nobody forced you to go to that gym every day. Right. You, you could have had an outside life. Now, granted, you didn't have two parents, but apparently – you know, you had your mom, and I guess the dad was somewhat in the picture. I don't know. Yeah. But it sounded like he was just making excuses for why, you know. But yeah. I, I think the moment he signed with that Jay-Z bunch, he was, yeah. they were getting him out of Oklahoma City. As quick it started as they could. going downhill. I'm li- yeah. I can go with that. Yeah, I can go with that. You know. Makes sense. And, and to me, I'm, are you, everybody's like, why hasn't Russell signed the extension? I'm, I'm cool with that because I think – He's waiting to see what happens. Yeah, this season with with Paul yeah. Paul George PG thirteen, and I think I'm I'm confident that he, that he will resign. And if he doesn't, I'm fine with that because I know he won't go to a Golden State. You know, he would if if Kitty went to Boston, if Kitty went to to DC, I would have felt differently. Yeah, but he went to Golden freaking State. Yeah, you know. Like- you know some some can think that well, okay, did maybe that deal was already in the works long before it ever happened, and yeah, you know, you look how we played in that KD and played in that last, oh, you know, Doug, I'm right there with you. You could, I'm you right could, there you could, you with could, you. You could think a lot of things there if you wanted to. That's we're right. we're up three one, and all of a sudden KD can't hit the broadside of a barn. You know, I think he knew that if we beat them, it would look really weird to go there after we yeah. beat them. You know. You know, you know, you know, like, you know, like I said, we don't know, but you can sure. You don't know. Yeah. You can speculate, but. And it's fun to speculate. To yeah. be honest with you, all that stuff, we get riled up, but at the end of the day, it makes for good radio. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, the, and, and, and Russell, you know, with all of his outfits. And, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, when, when KD was a photographer at the Super Bowl, remember yeah, that? Right. And then Russell shows up with a photography uniform yeah. on. You, you got to love that, huh? I have a good fortune of running into uh, Maurice Cheeks oh, uh-huh. on a regular basis at the Starbucks I go to. You know who Maurice Cheeks is? He's an assistant coach, Hall of Fame point guard for the 76ers, and he's not worried about Russell resigning, and he's really excited about PG-13. Oh, yeah. so I like uh, I like where the Thunder are. Uh, well, now, should, should be I better ran, this year. Should be better. Oh, yeah. They've, they've you know, been. as has a Warriors shirt, I – he re- I ran out of toilet paper, and uh, he let me borrow it. And, uh, <laughs> it's not he, true. I won't when, let him borrow it. I, I only wear it to special events so he can he can see it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought he's got a Golden Girl shirt on. <laughs> you know. Mm, okay. So uh, anyway, but you think about it, here just what was it a few years ago? You know, Stern wouldn't allow Chris Paul to go to the Lake uh, the Lakers La- Lakers yeah. because that would create a. Him. Super team. Super team. We're going to have that. And now all of a sudden, you know. No, you got yeah. the super team. Yeah. I yeah. know. I know. And then you've got a. Uh, hey, but listen, I, it, everybody hates him. And it's great oh. for the NBA. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. everybody's watching now. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just the way it is. The oh, vil- yeah. The villains are there. So it makes a lot more fun. But what it is, you know, it, it's, I think I saw that in the paper there the, yesterday or the, the day before where they said, you know, everybody think, well, why don't these players all go to the East? They're going to have a better shot to make it to the finals now. Everybody's going to the West Coast teams. Yep. Right. You know, all the good players. I've know. even read an article that they're thinking about just having mixed playoffs now. Yeah. yeah. They they would be because the West has been so dominant. You know, a lot of those East teams wouldn't even come close to And what? Yeah. But then the East plays a different style of ball than the West. I mean, I look at that contract Steph Curry got – Two hundred and one million, and you think about what you got to be getting from his sponsorship from uh, Playtex tampons. Heck, he might be cleared about three hundred million. 
No, I think there's no no doubt about it. <laughs> Am I the only one that has a tampon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stephanie but, Curry. Uh, but um, you, you, you gotta love to hate them, though. Everybody hates. Oh them, yeah. Though. Unless you're there, there are people. There's kids everywhere that admire them. You know? Oh yeah. So he's just a good t- trash talker. I found out that my ten year old had this shirt that said, uh, "I can do all things," and he's wearing it in the. One day I got to look at that shirt and I saw an Under Armour logo on the back of it. And I said, what the hell? And I figured out that was shirt was tied to Steph Curry some kind of way. <laughs> I said, my God, we ain't wearing that shirt again. Trash. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Guys. Well, we, we better go into yeah, let's what go we're into We can talk sports all night. Let's go into it. So, uh, now we, we don't have video right now, but... Um, we're still doing the audio thing, but Doug, you want to kind of tell us a little bit about your disability and, and um, um, so the listeners can, can gain understanding. One of the things we're doing is trying to, to uh, highlight to our listeners the fact that people with disabilities, uh, people in wheelchairs, people with handicaps, however you want to say it, are number one regular folks, but also to try to educate our listeners to understand how I've got a wheelchair, you got a wheelchair, and just to kind of break down some of these barriers. I like to say with a sledgehammer, yeah. you know, we really want to make it fun, talk sports, but also educate. So could you tell us a little bit about your disability? Well, um, mine was a farm accident. I was getting out back into a wheat truck, something that I'd done thousands of times before. But at that time, I, the auger had quit on me. I was a little pissed. Little lost yeah. my temperature, temper, and got you know started to get out. Put my foot up on top of the tailgate. Next thing I know, I'm heading straight down to the ground. You know, it's only maybe four or five foot, but basically I was almost standing up when I went over. You know, and I tried to roll over and hit on my back, and I hit and rolled, and that was it. I didn't move. You know, I tried, you- tried to get up, and nothing worked. Were you, were you awake through all that? Oh, yeah. I never passed out. Never did. <clears throat> Didn't break anything. Nothing. All oh. it did was pinch my spinal cord. They figure about C3, 4, 5, somewhere in there, maybe C2. I I laid there. It was around probably 5, 5.30 in the evening in February. And I laid outside there about, I'd say, five hours before anybody found me Real, because wow. my mom and dad had gone up to Enid to... My grandpa was in the hospital with cancer, and she was also going dress shopping because my brother was going to be married in about a month or so, you know. So then they came came home, and I wasn't in the house. They knew something was wrong. They came home. looking for you. Came looking for me, and but yeah. I never passed out. I had trouble breathing there for a while, and I had to figure figure that out. So Wait, now this was you said it was what year was it? Nineteen eighty six. Nineteen. So you're thirty years past your injury. Yes. Wow. Well, it's impressive. I don't meet a lot of people that are, you know, 30 years past. So, so when you, when you, um, were there and you're, you're, was it cold? Yeah. That time period? It was cold. It was freezing cold. You know, I had on insulated coveralls, heavy boots, a jacket, big heavy jacket and a stocking cap and the stocking cap came off, you know, but, um, when, when I rolled it, but there for a while, the, Dog we had his sheep dogs. She came around, laid by me there for a while. But um, when they when they came and got me, and like I said, I never never lost consciousness. Made a lot of deals with God, <laughs> trying to sure, you know, sure. especially when the breathing wasn't going on. But I guess in a way, it was a good thing that I laid there that long. Because you- if I'd have had difficulty breathing, they'd have found me immediately, and then would have had then that breathing. They probably would have traked me. So I never had a trach. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So that that was a major. Yeah, because you play. just pinched it. You didn't. Yeah, you yeah didn't it's just sever. like it shoved my head forward. I guess is yeah. all they know. You know, all we know. And and come to find out, which we didn't know at the time, uh, until I got up to Craig Hospital, we they did an MRI, and I had a narrowing in my spinal canal, up in that area. Already. Already. Um. And so the doctor said, if you didn't have that, you probably wouldn't have had wow. anything. Wow. So yeah. it was just, free, you know, I didn't break a bone, displace anything. It was wow. just, just like you kinked a rubber hose, right. garden hose. Yeah. So the way to mount it, because then he took a 
there was just a little dark area there on the spinal cord. He said, that's probably where it ha- you know. Right where it was. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, at that time, I mean, Oklahoma City didn't have MRI. They all, all they had was x-rays and CT scans, and Denver had just gotten a MRI machine yeah. when I got up there. Well, 1986, medical would have been totally different than oh, yeah. today. So, what, so you, you lost... You didn't lose consciousness and all. How long before you the breathing issue came in? Before you, ah, oh, did, did it take a while before that was? Yeah, it difficult? seemed like it, but I, you know, you, I don't I sort of lose track of time because sure. it's getting dark and don't know, you know. But I just, I don't know. It's just one thing. Just start puffing and puffing, you know, trying to yeah. keep my breath. And well, lots of times they'll say in a spinal cord injury, it's there might be an injury injury right to the cord but then the damage comes from a swelling yeah so what i wonder is well, i think that's what mine was the swelling yeah the swelling came uh-huh. on so the breathing would come later because it would move from say your c5 level up to your diaphragm mm-hmm. area which is about four yeah and then i wonder though if the cold didn't help you because it kept the swelling from being yeah. so severe so, uh, yeah. may have, I don't know. that's one thing you know you think something because when they took my temperature, it, they couldn't get a reading. Wow. I was that cold. Or, yeah. So. It could have helped with that. You know, because today on the NFL, not to derail your story, but to kind of go, that makes me think of it. Now they have protocol on the sidelines. When somebody's injured that they think it's a spinal cord thing, they actually bring this this system out that hooks up to them that brings cold well, to them. So that, because a lot of the damage in the spinal cord would come from the swelling. Yeah. So slow that metabolism and everything down. Yeah. And, yeah. So you wonder if that helped. So yeah. Did so you how, were you able to uh, keep? Were you able to? Uh, did the breathing come and go, or did you? Did you? No, it came. You know, first, you know, I was just laying there, and like I said, I was trying to get up. You know, and sometimes I wonder, okay, if I hadn't tried to get up, and you know, because I was stretching my neck, trying. Right. If I hadn't done that, okay, would have things been fine? You know, was it? You don't know. Yeah, you just don't know. And, yeah. but you know, I, I had trouble for a little while. And then after that, I was pretty well, once I got the breathing thing, that, you know, whatever. Did you go, uh, when they, when, when, uh, everybody, did you go straight to the local hospital first? Yeah. I'm called local, you know, they came in there and took me in there. And from what, I mean, from that point on, from when I got in the ambulance, it's all pretty fuzzy. Was it? You right. know, um, I guess probably I relaxed. Yeah, because you're probably on high alert. Yeah. Most of the time. And sure, so, sure. anyway, but, you know, I think they cut off all my clothes and everything. And then, you know, like I said, next thing I know, I'm down at, you know, they transferred me to Mercy pretty quickly, I think. And uh, so I was in Mercy Hospital there for, I don't know how long I was there. And, you know, I was wanting to eat something and I was just going to eat a regular meal. No, no, we got to give you insure. Yeah. They didn't want to give you anything. They're like, hey, wait a minute, me. where's the real food at? Yeah, you know, I think I can eat fine. You know, I think I still think I could eat fine, but they didn't want to. And you know, then I, the day they got ready to transfer me over to is O'Donohue, I guess is what it was. Back, that's right. That's yeah. what it was when I okay downtown. Yeah, kind of area. and there was a girl came in to take my um, X-ray, one more X-ray before I left. I okay. was laying there and I had to front of my uh neck brace off and she just comes in and just lifts my neck up and all that boy the pain it was sore you know and from the from then but by the time i got over to o'donohue i was running a fever and for the longest time they could not figure out where my fever <coughs> was coming from taking x-rays all kinds of things yeah and so they Finally got, we turned just right, and they picked up a pus pocket between my rib cage and lung. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, because I was running a high fever. They just haven't put ice baths on me to try and keep me cool. And the doctor came into my room, and he just made a little slip. Mom was there and watched him and spread that rib apart, and that pus just shot wow out across the room wow so, you know so got that out of there and then, were you you were, were you in o'donohue for the listeners is a rehab facility yeah 
So it was an acute at that time. You'd have been in rehab. Yeah. And how long were you in rehab? Oh, gosh. I was in there three, let's see. March, April. I'm trying to think. When I transferred to Craig, it was like June, I think. How old were you when the injury happened, though? I was 25. 25 years old? Okay. Yeah. But, but that was another thing. When that doctor spread that rib, I, could felt, I felt a shock of pain go up through my right arm. And I always wondered to that day when they spread that rib, did they pinch a nerve? And that's why my right arm did not come back. I mean, my left arm works just fine, you know, as far as. Right. Gross, but the right arm never did. And I sometimes wonder, you know, because I was right handed. Yeah. You know, I was a right handed guy, everything, you know, but over the years, I've noticed all my right side, which is where I had previous injuries or the side that's t- You know, I had my t- turned ankles and playing basketball and stuff, you right. know, baseball. So that was weak. And then I would messed up my hip before I'd ever got, you know, hurt a little bit. I was hanging from a inversion boots. Yeah. And I took one leg down and I was hanging from one leg and it apparently pulled a bunch of stuff. You On know. that side. Yeah. 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 And I didn't think of it, at, of it at the time. And so I just went on, you know, and so I think that all, that as you know, got after I got hurt, all that stuff sort of all played into it. My because I'd separated my shoulder when I was playing softball, so you know. Well, now so, but from the from O'Donohue in a rehab, you went to Craig Hospital, which yeah. is a rehab facility. No, where is Craig for people that? That's what? in Denver, Colorado. Denver, it, Colorado. It was and probably still is. I don't. I mean, there's a was at that time the premier place for spinal cord injury in the United States. They were cutting edge, you know, yeah. and this would have been uh, in a time period that uh, there's a lot of rehabs, but that type of they, spinal they, cord stuff, that, this is not normal. They were devoted solely to spinal cord and brain injury because they had another floor that was brain injury. You want to see some people that are in bad shape, you go go there and you think, boy, I'm lucky. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so how long were you in Craig? I was there probably... Three months, I'm trying to think. I came home and. So what was, month was the accident again? February. Like, February. Okay, that's right. And February. I and I finally got home for good. I would say late August, maybe September. I don't remember for you know. But it was six or seven months. Right oh there. yeah, I was in hot. You know, well, the setback with the rib. You know, the putt that. You know, that set me back. It took me a while to recover from that, and then being at. Where I was at O'Donohue, that was a, a teaching hospital, so the rotation changed all the time. And I had a lot of spat, muscle spasms. So they, at times, they got me up on some experimental doses of stuff, and I was totally out of it. Gotcha. And, you know, they would let it. After so you really a while, couldn't do rehab when you are out of it. Well, I could do rehab, but I couldn't stay awake. Right. Gotcha. You know, and there, after you'd been there a while, then you got to go home on weekends, you know, to see how with your parents, you know, and I went home one weekend and basically I'm just a zombie there the whole time, you know? (laughs) And so mom and dad weren't too happy about that. And so anyway, sat down with the doctors and talked and really weren't happy with how things were going back to, you know, every two weeks or so off, you know, you got a new round of doctors coming in and, you know, I went to a doctor over, over there in children's, which is attached to it. And I waited. They took me over there for an appointment. I sat in that office for probably two hours before they ever come got me. And then all that doctor could think was that I had a stroke. He didn't know. No. Yeah, well, he, he, because I couldn't move this right arm, you know, he, he, he was, you know, because he's, he's telling these assistants with him, you know, he you know, well, this is, this looks like a stroke, you know. Right. No, it's not a stroke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's scary. So you, know. you were at Craig for, Three or four months, about seven months, you came home. Mm-hmm. You came home with the wheelchair? With the, with my first, yeah, the wheel, not, not this one, but it was a Everson Jennings rear wheel drive, sip and puff, had no tilt, reclined, the legs elevated, and it had a reclining back, you yeah. know. And, Doug, would you kind of, uh, for our listeners, talk about sip and puff, what that? Okay, so sip and puff just basically is you have a tube, 
that you blow into and they call it sip you know puff and you puff one time and you can put your chair in gear and then just start taking off and you can slowly go increase your speed or however you want however you want to set it the yeah. sip part is that puts you in reverse yeah, okay. and then if you want to turn right you blow into it but not as hard i mean i don't have to continually blow in this thing that's what the latch thing that you know i've got it in what they call a latch mode which puts it in gear and then i just blow into it and it'll sit there and run till i tell it to stop okay so you don't have to blow constantly it's like a, i don't have to blow constantly now it can be set up that way but yeah you know, that's I don't, a I, lot that's a lot harder a lot of yeah. hot air there yeah yeah it's a lot hot air. yeah but, it's kind of like turning the light switch on. When you do that, you turn the light switch on and you're going until you turn okay. the light switch yeah. on. Yeah. So, so anyway, you like I said, you puff and send it on its way and you want to turn right, you blow again, but it's a it's a little lighter puff. It's just something you learn how to do. It takes a little bit, you know. Trial and error. Trial and error. A little bit, you now, know. Is that, it's not too hard. But is that the, um, it's not the initial setup they had for you with your chair, though, right? Well, no. The initial the initial chair I had, or they were thinking of getting me, and that was when I was down here at O'Donohue, was just a regular real-wheel drive chair with a joystick. And then I would drive it with a joystick. Well, my hand, I had a lot of spasticity, so my hands would jump on all over. So they put Velcro on my hand, around my hand, and then Velcro on the joystick knob. And then I would push to go for you know, so... We we'll try that a little bit, which is fine until your spasticity. Yeah, until the spasticity right. t- takes over. As we know, Superman strength. Yeah, that's right. Can't and, control it. And so, yeah, I ran over a lady's foot getting out of the <laughs> out of the elevator doing that. You know, I had a little spat and boom, and I <laughs> took off. And you know, the chair was doing fine. Like, and then I, uh, we we're getting ready to go on a deal. They took us on trips at time. You know, outings, and I'm sitting at the top of this ramp. And all of a sudden, my chair just sort of takes off, and bam, I hit the wall down there, you know. <laughs> Whoa. You know. Uh-huh. And So did they take you out of that at that point? Or no, did they, just no, they took me on, took me on out and thought, okay, everything's all right. Put it back in gear, and it still was having taken off, you know, having problems. And I thought, okay, well, let's get him back up inside, see what's going on. They get me up, and they get me up and back inside up in this long hallway, and they put that thing, had me put it in gear, and they turned it on, and it took off. And there was two nurses holding on, and I'm doing a wheelie going down the hallway for about 30, 40 <laughs> wow. feet. Wow. Where they could get things, you know. And but your that, hand is Velcro to the joystick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at that time, I didn't have, the, I didn't have it on. It, yeah. What had happened, I guess, the electronics inside had somehow fused it. And it, it, just took, kept it took off. <laughs> it took off. It, it became its own. You know, you turned it on and it was ready to go. <laughs> yes. Somebody needs to do something different with that chair. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. so anyway, that like I said, that was just a standard old chair. There was no recline, no anything. It was just an electric wheelchair. And then like we went out to Craig and you know, that's when they start, you know, we'll get you a wheelchair and it'll be sip and puff and it'll have this recline feature, you know, and uh the legs will elevate you know they elevate at the same time but at least they you know well let's tell let's tell a little bit because um this would be a good time to explain a little bit and we haven't jp and i've been talking about we do a bad job of giving a visual sometimes to the listeners but when you're talking about tilt and recline those are um what doug's talking about is used to chairs didn't have that they would only have a recline Mm -hmm. only and that's a problem for some for a lot of people that are spinal cord injury especially at, uh, at Doug's level was because the recline would open up and then whenever it comes back forward, he doesn't have control of his hips and it would push their hips forward. And yeah. so therefore they're coming out. So tilt and right. I'll let you guys, I'll expand what the basics, what tilt was made for was pressure relief to take the yeah. pressure off of your bottom and move it to your back. But you, you guys could probably expand a little bit better on what you use it for tilt for and recline. Well, Go ahead, Dad. I mean, I use the tilt for, Fake pressure relief. I mean, that's the biggest thing. You know, it's, I'm a more comfortable when I'm tilted back because I still got a lot of spasticity. And so these things I got, you know, hold me in the chair here. You know, I had to be belted in to stay in whatever chair I was in. It didn't matter and yeah. just because of my spasticity. But you know, 
the the reclining mechanism that I had at that time also the the back slid. It was a can't think of the name of it. It was called back. You know, lay back. Yeah, I mean that that chair laid flat. Right. You know, so and you would lay flat. Yeah, you could lay as flat as could be. You know, and at that time I I was still pretty spastic and tight, and so it was hard for me to lay back because the muscles would grip so tight when I'd have in my abdomen that I couldn't breathe at times. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah w- it, when you laid back. Laid back, or even at other times, I could be just sitting there and having, sp- you know, I was having that problem when I was still at O'Donoghue. I'd be sitting there, and I'd have a spasm, and I would have, you know, and I don't have that problem as much in, anymore, you know, basically when I, But the tilt's designed for, so the tilt, pressure will, relief. Yeah, um, get the pressure off your body. Pressure relief and just whatever you need, you know. And then this particular chair that I've got, it's all got, it also has an elevate. And when I went looking for, because I had that first Everson Jennings chair for until, let's see, I had my 30 year reunion in 2008. I, I, I had that wow. old chair for 30. Wow. Man, or, that's unbelievable. Or, or 20 years, I guess. Winter, 20 year reunion, I guess it was. So that'd been. 98 yeah but still that's a long time to have that chair. yeah i had that chair, you know and we just made do with it you know if we needed something we'd go have it made or whatever you get know we go to the local uh auto dealer you know the napper or whatever and get some part we'd need and you know and so Great. we made do with it for all those years we redid the armrest because the original armrests were plastic and they broke out so what dad went and had them made out of basically eight inch th- thick steel he made it right there yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. covered it up i mean those were some heavy dudes <laughs> well, it, that, there's nothing wrong with that it's but great. it worked for us and like i said i finally we finally start you know I'd, I'd look occasionally for a chair but i'd never see one that i thought would work for me and then when i finally decided we're going to get a chair i wanted one that elevated because i go to sporting events i would go, go to my um nieces sure, and nephews sure. games and stuff and yeah, ADA is great. And those bars, but when you're in a wheelchair, your line of sight is oh, right, right through them bars. So with this Something. at elevate, I go up about a foot and a half. I'm looking over them bars. No, nope. <laughs> awesome. a foot and a half. Wow. I, I don't know how high it is for sure, but you know, 10, 10 12 inches. 10, 12 inches, and yeah. that gets you up over them bars, and you got a clear oh, yeah, field of view. Man. You know. So, so is this your? So you've only had two chairs. Huh? Have you only had two chairs? Three. Three. Three so there's one in between these. Yeah, there's one. That, 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 there's one in between, and it was a, what this one is, a Pride Mobility or whatever. Yeah, that's Pride. And uh, it lasted about, oh, let's see, that was the one I got in whatever year it was. And uh, anyway, and it had to elevate, too. It had to tilt and recline and elevate. And then it, one of the motors was giving me problems, and so I had to. Well, they had to order motors. Well, anyway, that was another big <laughs> chaser. Yeah, yeah. I ended yeah. up ended up getting a new wheelchair because of that. Even though the old one is now, is now fixed, but it it's helped. You know, it's there's a spare now, and it's come in handy with the situation my dad has gotten into. So, but anyway, this nice chair. You know, I love it. So you get your first. Uh, you're out there at the hospital. The the joystick velcro thing is not working. Did the people what's the hospital name in Craig? People out of Craig Hospital recommend sip and puff? Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean they well they wanted me independent and so they you know, they had old chairs that they put you in and the one they gave me was a sip and puff chair. Right. So, so I you, le- started learning on this old sip and puff that they had out there. And so that's what I had basically the whole time I was there, just sip and puff. And then the day I get, we get ready to, they release me and I get ready to go home. They bring in the, the wheelchair house, brought my, my chair and explained some of the features. And so you, that, get, you took it home from took the it hospital. Home, took it home, home from the hospital. And so, and it, I was fortunate that I got to fly home pri- my private airplane. My uncle, um, he had an airplane that he flew his little twin engine. And so we just loaded, loaded me up in the airplane and the chair and away we went. That's a cool story. You know. You know, I like to really rail on those airlines. Uh, yeah, so, private jet is the way to go. Uh-huh. But, you know, it was just a little old 
twin engine propeller plane that he had you know he liked to fly so that's what how i got home and all that stuff you did know. you have any trouble even then far as the height for getting to carry in do you remember no the problem i had when i when i went from here to craig yeah i had problem adjusting to the the thin air they, then i had uh, you know uh, i mean it's because far- i was doing great down here and I get up here and all of a sudden I'm having trouble. You're having trouble breathing. Breathing, you know, I'm having to wear. I I wasn't having to wear that little girdle thing they put around the middle to keep, you know. And I get up there and all of a sudden I'm back to having to have that thing on because of the thin air. But I got used to it and then up in the airplane it didn't bother me at all, you know. So did they put a ramp? How'd you get on that plane? Do you remember? They just lifted me up with the wheelchair. They did. Wow. wow. Yeah, just manual, you know. Pick it up. That's just pick, you know. Wow. So, was there was there a headroom on the plane though for you? Yeah, it was pretty good. You know, wasn't too bad. And then I, rec- I think I may have reclined back a little. You know. So you had? Did you have tilt on that chair? No, just, just recline. recline. Just Only recline. recline yeah. yeah, back in the and so in the in the when we were talking about earlier, we we're talking about the eighties of the medical equipment. It, it was there like was a, no tilt. There was no tilt. Yeah. It didn't exist. You, you know, here's the thing. In when, America, it didn't. Should say. When when I look at what the tilt and recline is, we had that on the farm. Basically, that's what you use the dump truck, wheat truck. Yes, sir. You know, that's right. You know, yeah, right. We just thought, well, hey, we could have put that on that. We could have made our own tilt. You know, tilt and elevate. That's exactly right. You know, but yeah. you don't think about this. You know, right. But well, you don't think about it until you have to think. About I'm. It. Yeah. I wish mine would like tripod out where I can go up like five or six feet. Yeah, but see now, now JP. You know, he has tilt, recline, elevator. He has yeah. power legs that go to the floor. Right. You got all of the bells. And I do, yeah. And, and for me... Um, but but you didn't start out that way. No. No, in fact, uh, if if I can say, I, w- I went power chair in um, 1995, well, fall of 94, because I'm from a real small town, even smaller than... The one Doug's from, and um, I always used me in a wheelchair, but I went power in college because my college campus, if if seemed bigger than my hometown, and probably was. Oh. Uh, so I ended up on this power chair, and it was no tilt, no recline, classic, quickie power chair, P200 was the model I recall. And it was all I knew. But I knew that there would be times in which I, my body would be very compressed and uncomfortable, especially late in the day. So once I got exposed to the elevator, to the uh, uh, initially my elevator was the first thing I had. Then I got the tilt, and the tilt is something I just can't live without. Yeah. Now, because but you were resistant to it. Yeah, I was because people in wheelchairs and people with various disabilities or handicaps, we oftentimes develop a system uh, based around our equipment. And yeah. when you change the core of our equipment, Another, we begin uh, we begin to really worry if we'll be able to function. Yeah. So that's where the resistance is really born from. But once I incorporated the tilt in, now when I'm in my non tilting chair, or as I call it, my airplane chair, <laughs> I I don't know how I ever. I mean, whether it's my butt or my back, the discomfort level is so high now because the tilt to me is is essential. And, but also for me is the power of leg rest because of my cerebral palsy. In order for me to independently transfer, I have to drop my leg rest to the floor. And that's what's currently uh, caused me to be in a loaner chair because uh, that's what broke on my chair. So oh, okay. it's the tiniest things that are the difference. Your coaches talk about the, the smallest, the littlest things make the biggest difference. Mm-hmm. Well, to me, that translates perfectly to our world. Well, one, one inch makes all the difference sure. in the world so what jp has on his chair is a foot plate that goes all the way to the floor powered powered so mm-hmm. so not only does it elevate and articulate like yours does so that as the legs go up they go away from you his does uh his will also push the button and he can take that foot plate all the way to the floor but the problem is is even that he can't transfer out independently unless it's flat on the floor right and my my chair actually has a kind of uh tapered foot plate so that 
it's kind of thick towards the back, and then it at the at the very front, it's almost flush with the floor. I mean, it's almost like a ramp. Yeah, it's like a ramp. It's exactly like a ramp. Yeah. As nailed it, and uh, so now I'm adjusting, and I'm so thankful for my loaded chair. But I'm adjusting because the foot plate itself is thicker, so I kind of have to contend with that. But but yeah, the apprehension, and we'll see in sh- this show over and over again, because we build our system of function around this mobility device, and so there's a lot of apprehension on my part when I made that big change from the classic rear-wheel drive, non-tilting, non-reclining chair to my, to my first full tilt, full recline mid-wheel. chair, mid-wheel chair. And I'm still trying to see what Doug has. Are you a mid-wheel guy, Doug, or are you a front-wheel? Mid-wheel. He's mid-wheel. I, I'm still resistant to the front-wheel chair. Well, there's some positives to it, but, you know, um, you have to try it to really see it. They look tippy to me. No. I mean, I, I mean they tried to get me... To a front wheel chair, and I said, "No, I want that mid wheel chair because I can make a lot tighter you turn." Can. It you is know, a tighter turn because yeah. in my brother's house, you can go down this one hallway and turn right. If I didn't have this chair, I couldn't. You know, you're really scraping. It, yeah, it's in the, and I, you know, I thought, well, the front wheel drive is no different than the rear wheel drive. You still got a big area that you're taking up when you turn. So yeah, yeah. it's a little bit. The turning radius would be a little bit larger in the front. But, yeah. it, but it performs in certain categories. But what I found interesting when you were talking about, you know, you had your other, your first chair for 20 years. Part of that. Amazing. Yeah, it is. Part of that resistance was you were functioning. You mm-hmm. were doing stuff and you were okay with what you already had. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, and that's probably part of your, uh, of your generation and your age. Cause a lot of these younger time now they they're just waiting for the five-year mark to come up and ready to get a new piece of equipment yeah I, i've i've had a hard time with that you know say on well, five years you know this chair should last more than five years yeah you know yeah yeah that's a generational thing yeah. just for, for sure but um but for you to be in that 20 years you're looking at chairs going i don't think that'll work i don't think that work what's sad about the industry and this is anything in the medical world but certainly in this part of the medical world is trying something is a key component and for you to have try anything is difficult because you're driving with specialty controls yeah to drive it but jp for example jp got he tried a chair because somebody put him in a chair right and made him try it and then after he tried it it was like a no-brainer but you would but just getting to that trial point unfortunately most people have somebody just like when you were at o'donohue somebody told you how you're going to do it and you never got to experience the other way of doing it and knowing that that right. was better. Yeah. Right. The fact that, that that we rely, whether it's at the point of the injury or at the point of, uh, for me, with her palsy of just getting old enough in the wheelchair, we kind of get that first chair. We have to kind of have a look at the draw on who our, who our PTs are, yep. who our specialists are, because they really do have a huge hand in shaping our viewpoint of our mobility equipment. So to me, ideally it would be great if people could, could, could have experienced a, a wider variety. Well, what I, what I try to relay to people is, um, ask and demand that you try something. And as it really hit on it there, self advocacy, you'll hear us say this a lot. Our, our kind of our catchphrase, Doug is learn helplessness. We actually believe and that uh, sometimes the various social programs whether it's, and the various hospitals, so, some people get ingrained in what we call learned helplessness, and they lose that aspect of independence, of independence yeah. and of, of, of fighting and advocating for yourself. So I think Az nailed it with that. Hey, stop and ask and do your research. I know Doug's a big research guy. Every time we talk uh, Learn something about the pharmaceutical industry that they're pulling the wool over our eyes on. I remember we were having lunch one day telling me about something. That they threw, threw something on cancer and it just started killing the cancer left and right. Remember that story, Doug? Mm-hmm. I still remember that. I think, well, why the hell is it that available then? <laughs> because it doesn't make money. <laughs> there you go. You know, yeah. we have a trillion-dollar industry that doesn't want to, you know, doesn't want to give that up. That's right. Right. There's a lot. Well, I we, mean, you, the economy 
would take if the cure for cancer that's as inexpensive as it is was released. Yeah. Because yeah. for basically every illness there you can if people only knew that with diet and some supplements and some anti natural antifungals or even prescription they can get rid of most any problem they got. There are doctors out there now that you can go to. There's some good ones that are doing that now. You know. Yeah. They yeah. can reverse your MS, they can reverse your Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, all kind, you know, all kinds of things, you know. So Now now tell me something when you when you came home, uh, do you do you do you go on a special diet now? I mean cuz okay. honestly you you look for being as long as you've been injured, you look you look great. Okay. I mean, really. I didn't start doing this diet until about 16, 17 years ago. Okay. I mean, before that, I, I ate what you call the standard American diet, which Fried the, SAD, you yeah. know, SAD. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I was having problems. Right. You know, my body was stiff, achy, and all that stuff. You know, I didn't want to do anything. I was lethargic. I had basically what they call brain fog. You know, I just, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd lean back, I'd tilt back in, in that, in that first year, I'd have them tilt me back on the bed. So I'd get a pressure, you know, did you really? Wow. Yeah. And so get for rest relief and, you know, a few minutes I'd be asleep. And so I was, my dad was having health problems at the time. So I was sort of looking around, but you know, looking for things that might help him. And I ran across this show called know the cause by Doug Kaufman. I started watching it here and there, and some of the things he started was saying started made sense to me. The TV show, TV show, it was on channel fifty-two or forty-three, whatever back back in the day, and uh, it was a syndicated show, you know, just whatever yeah. market picked it up. And I started watching it, and he was talking about you know having tightness in your chest, and you could always want when want to be popped, you know, you'd pop it. And I had that when I was in high school, you know, that pressure. And doc, I'd go to chiropractors and had one doctor told me, well, you've got an extra rib. That's why you have all this problem. Well, Doug was talking about, Kaufman was talking about this stuff. And he, uh, I thought, wow, that sounds like me. So I got his books and I read his book and I changed my diet. And within two weeks, I mean, bam. I was had more energy. I wanted to do things, and didn't hurt near as bad. And so, basically, what it, his diet consists of: you cut out grains and sugar. And those two are the main culprits. The, they're the bad ones. Yeah, um, especially sugar. Yeah. Sugar yeah. kills. I mean, if it does. some doctors had their way, sugar would be have a little black box warning on it. Right, it, it's that bad for you because all it does is feeds the fungus. Yeah, and that's what you know. You get a fun, you know, doctors say, well, you can't have a fungal infection. You know, it's just toenail fungus or jock itch or vaginal right. yeast or something. That's all they they're taught. There's mm-hmm. no way you could have it in your bloodstream or have it any other way. But you can. It just right. it, it emits a slow poison, and it just slowly takes you down. So it's not like, boom, you go down. I mean, now some people that does happen. Right. But that's a cumulative effect over 30, 40, 50 years. You've been eating all this stuff that's feeding the fungus, and it's, it wants to stay alive. So if you try to starve it out, it's going, to make, it's going to emit what they call mycotoxins or poisons to make you feel bad. It's actual name for it. It's called Herxheimer's reaction. And it make you feel bad enough that you know, you'll almost – like you got coming down with the flu and everything else, if it's bad enough reaction to try and make you quit doing what you're doing because you're starving it and killing it, and it doesn't like that. Right. It wants to live. So but, you, you've you been practicing that diet since when? Oh, about 16, 17 years. Did you, I, did you lose weight and everything? Yeah, I, lose, that? I lost weight, um, lost my belly. I had, you know, belly was sticking out. I mean, I still got it, but, I mean, I'm down around, I think, when I – I mean, one forty. You, you look very healthy. So you really do. You know, it's you know, and I don't. I don't get out. You know, I try to get outside some. You know, I don't. I'm not out like Jason is. 
you know, I don't have a job or anything. I've been fortunate. My parents have let me live with them, you know. And we, uh, that's another thing we haven't got into as we, uh, it's so hard to get our weight. It's so hard to just to wait. Yeah. You know, everybody else, they get up in the morning, they get on the scale and they weigh. Yeah. But yeah. you know, about a, about a year ago, uh, I want to get my weight. I ended up going to Jim Thorpe. Yeah, they have a scale uh, there. Yeah, and I had to actually uh, get some help from a nurse there to to uh, get out of my chair so they could weigh my chair and then get um, then get back in my chair and then weigh me with the chair and then do a little basic arithmetic to figure out yep. what I weighed. Subtract and add. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is, but I mean. You see a lot of people who are injured who uh, who continue with a bad diet, and yeah. it certainly affects them. And, you know, I would recommend yeah. this diet to anybody. I mean, it it can change your life, literally. Change mine. Like I said, it changed me from basically a hermit. I didn't want to go do anything, you know. Yeah. And I started what, doing that chair. What kind, what kind of uh, – I know you said you don't work, work currently, but what, what work were you doing pre-injury? Pre injury, I had just gotten my teaching degree and had done my student teaching. I thought about doing, I was looking at being a teach coach and all that stuff. And I hadn't had any job offers. I'd just gotten done. I was actually, you know, helping on the farm. And so that was that year. I mean, I got offered a job at Piedmont just like two weeks before their school started. But it's only because they had like six coaches quit the two weeks before school. And I'm going, uh, what's going on here? Yeah. What am I going to what, get Am in? I getting into something bad? Get, yeah, right, you know, right. It makes a guy wonder. makes a guy wonder. So I, I didn't take the job. And that was in the fall of 85, you know, September, August of 85. And then February of 86, I had the injury. Andrew, yeah. And so that was, you know, I was just helping on the farm, you know, taking care of the, you know, plant, you know, chores and taking care of the sheep and what, cattle and whatnot. So. Now, when you went and you came back from Craig, I mean, tell, tell us kind of how your mental state was. I mean, were you depressed or, you know, what were you going through in that time period? Because you seemed very upbeat. I mean, from the moment I met you tonight, it's been a good conversation talking about sports um, and things you enjoy. For the most part, I've been upbeat the whole time. I mean, I, it was not one of the things like I could, well, if that drunk driver hadn't, you know. Sure. I knew exactly – from the moment it happened, I knew what happened, why it happened. How, you know, it was on me. Right. So I, there was nobody to blame but myself. Sure. And so. It was just an that, accident. You know, so. I, that, that was another thing that when I was at O'Donohue and this, I, they had me talking to a psychiatrist at the time, you know, I think that was standard protocol. Yep. And she yeah. wanted to know if I was going to sue my parents. Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. And I go, no. Why would I? <laughs> I couldn't even, fat, you know, I'm thinking, what kind of, you know. But anyway, you know, yeah, I had some low moments or down moments. Um, I was in uh, up in Denver when my aunt died. Um, so, you know, I was a little, you know, she, uh, from what we, we think, she committed suicide. Um, but And you couldn't come back for that. So yeah, that- I couldn't come back for that, so. But I come back, right. you know, and yeah, I, there was, you know, I had good days and bad days. I, you know, and sometimes I wasn't very nice to people, you know, but for the most part, I've been pretty good, you know. Um, yeah, I've always had a pretty good attitude. Yeah. About, you you know. just found other things to, to yeah. get into. I mean, obviously you're a sports fan before, but probably yeah. now you just you enjoy it even more. Well, yeah. Yes and no. I mean. I do, but then it's become so much of it, it's almost too much. You know, I yeah, I, I would have back in the day, if the Dodgers were on TV, I, I was watching the Dodgers, you know, or, <laughs> you know, what, whoever was on, you know. Yeah, there's so and much I, now. And there's so now much there's every channel, yeah. Every channel, and, you know, now it's, got, you know, and that was also for, you know, pre-internet, you know. Yeah, sure. Now we got the internet to do a lot of different yeah. things. Do you, you know? do... Uh, like with your TV remote, do you do? Do you control your TV? Yeah, I control my TV. I, I you, do that. You control do control my TV and my little my DVRs and my satellite dish. Do you do all that with the regular remote or what? Are you? Regular remote. I I don't have a, you know, like an iPad that runs everything. I just no. I I'm 
sort of looking that way, but I, I still enjoy having you know four or five remotes there in front of me that I can <laughs> press kind of the buttons. On. Well, do you do you uh, have them laying there and, and then manipulate it while it's on the table? Or? Uh, yeah, I got them laying on a piece of foam. Yeah, and if I'm then I've got you know base you know the hospital tables. That's yep. like you know got a couple of them, three of them at home, and I said if I'm in my chair, they sit there, and then I've got what they call a typing stick that I you know have on my hand, and I just sit there and press the buttons. Or if I am if I'm laying in the bed, then I got the all the thing goes around your head, hand, and then I stick got a little stick that goes into it, and then I sit there and press the buttons. If I'm on using that on one side, and if I'm on the other laying on the other side, I'm just using my thumb. Gotcha. Yeah. So you know like, whatever I can like get Ed, to work. Like Ed was saying, whether or not you want to do any of that, but it would be cool if there was a place in which you had like. Like iPad set up where people could come in and yeah and try the remote like well, that. The, the, the technology is going so fast today. Uh, the you, uh, what Doug has on his chair is a, a little screen. We called it. I call it an Omni, but it's a little screen that tells uh, you know what seat function he's in, how he's driving. Most every one of those today have IR infrared. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, you can program. Your, I can program this one to run my remote if yeah, I want. Yeah, you could. So, yeah. So yeah. desire, you know. But but the technology is going so fast. Stuff with the iPads and like J, on JP set up for the listeners, he has a he doesn't have just a regular iPad. He's got the iPad Pro. Pro. Says I'm a pro. He's a pro. Yeah. So. Not an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the iPad Pro and he's got it mounted on his chair, and so uh, his chair broke down this last week, and and he he's super stressed out about it. And, Super. Well, and one of the big things that he was stressed out about, you can tell me if I'm wrong here, okay. is, he, is he had to have his iPad. Oh, yeah. The iPad is, it's actually not only for my keeping up with sports and everything, but it's a big part of my day-to-day job. That's how you communicate. Yeah, because of how I communicate. I also have a computer in my office that's a Microsoft Surface tablet that also sits in the same mount. Oh, does it really? Wow. So that... uh so that when I'm at the office, I'll be I'm able to tilt and still use my Microsoft Surface uh, at the office. So wow. so yeah, it was critical for both my downtime and my my eight to five to be able to uh, to have that mount. Well, now do you use voice recognition to talk to your extensively? Yeah, I use uh, on my iPad. I use uh, Siri. Siri, but uh, but that technology is also come out of uh dragon naturally speaking yeah. yeah which is what i use to talk to my my surface now my headset on when i'm talking to my surface doing all the typing all the computer all the mouth functions i do all of that hands free and I'm, when i'm watching the surface on the mount now if you actually watch the nfl game tonight you'll see that they are now look at the replays with the microsoft surface tablets but all that's done through through voice recognition. I've been using voice recognition software since 1993, back okay. when Dragon it was called Dragon mm-hmm. Dictate. Yeah. Okay. And back then you literally had to say each word: "Hello, Doug. How are you?" Question mark. Now you say, "Hello, Doug. How are you?" Question mark. All in one phrase. It gets so, it. And so it's really come a long ways. But um, so you have to still have to put punctuation in. Yeah, there is a setting in which you don't. I don't like it because I'm a writer. You know, I'm I'm a former journalist. Plus, you've been using it since. And uh, yeah, and I I disagree with it sometimes. I I don't always agree with the grammar, so I like to use my own. But yeah, I've been using it since day one. And let me tell you that leap we went to the dragon dictator dragon, naturally speaking. Oh my gosh! Night and day. Huh? That was revolutionary. Be able to say the whole thought in one in one sentence, and be able to uh, to use phrases, you know. And deal. now I deal with acronyms, you know, and all this stuff so easily. But yeah, uh, voice recognition is a huge part of my my day every day. Yeah, you need to probably look into that, Doug. I, I I thought about it, you know, use, but I thought, okay, yeah, I could use the voice thing. But I, what I use for my computer is I got a oh um have you ball. have you never used oh, dragon yeah. no never have well but, we need to set the 
at least demo it. I right. might I might know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, He's in the mirror. Because <laughs> I thought, I'm able to use my hand. I need to use it. Because if I don't use it, then I can here's, it. Yeah, here, no, that's, here's that's what good. I and, and, you're, and you're used to the ball and track mm-hmm. on there. And if you're efficient with it. Yeah, here's the great. thing, though. Here's the thing, though. You can keep using the, the track ball mouse. Yeah. Just use the, the dragon for the typing. Yeah. You know, I use a mouse at home. And uh, the only time I don't use a mouse is when I'm using the surface. Because I, because it's uh, it's just you can touch screen it, but the the screen is so small and so sensitive on the surface that I'm always frustrated myself because I'm touching the wrong part Art. of the screen. So I started using the dragon for that. But yeah, I would, I would, I, you need to demo that well, that I was, dragon. I, and I was gonna say I, I've seen you use a mouse before. So like at home, when you pull up to the desk, you use the mouse, but you can't tilt and use the mouse. No. If I'm tilted, I'm going to use voice recognition all the way. But, but by and large, if I'm on a standard computer, I'm going to be working a mouse with my right hand and then typing my voice. Uh, because, for example, if I was to type right now and I wanted to use the mouse with my voice, I would say mouse grid. And when I say mouse grid, a grid covers my entire screen, number one through nine, squares. And then I say, if the one I want to click is in nine, I say nine. And then it recalculates nine more squares within that area. And then you area. pick another one. Wow. And because, but if you do something, you do the same thing all the time, then I go, mouse grid 931 click. All oh, in one oh you already know it. Ah, I get yeah. that. Or double click. Is that or, just in your memory then? Yeah. Oh. It's just a memory, you know. Cause, Can um, they make a shortcut for that where you could just punch something they could. and do that? They could. But I, I uh, use the mouse grid a lot. Uh like I said, if I'm working on the surface, otherwise, it's still quicker if I'm on a standard computer to use a trackball or a regular mouse, uh, unless I really need to be tilted. Uh, but you know, a big thing for me is it's getting more and more frustrating, Doug, and you can tell me if you experience this, is being able to get in the right position at a desk. And that's why I'm liking more of the mounting and stuff, because getting up to the desk and then trying to get my arm on the mouse when I'm when I'm having to reach inside my armrest, and so the more I can do, and and not have to contend with that, is getting more and more appealing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. See, like the computer I've got on my computer's on a desk, and uh, it sets up fairly high, so I elevate. You know, I can elevate up, but I also can I tilt back a little bit, so I'm not, you know, so. Yeah. And I can sit there and just do. What I mean, the I'm thing you. And you go and you can do that for hours. No yeah, problem. I can do. You know, I'm not tilted way back, but I'm just the thing that I'm having trouble. Comfortable. Yeah. You know, but after a while, I do need to. You need to move it. Yeah. 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 The thing I'm having trouble with is whenever I dictate. If I if I try to dictate the word Durant, it always types traitor, <laughs> and I don't know why that is. <laughs> right. I'm trying to yeah. Yeah. See why that <laughs> is. Uh, Durant <laughs> traitor. Well, now, <laughs> but now, does it have like? autocorrect or anything like that because i, I i've turned off autocorrect on my no it, because it, it does it not like up more if than i <laughs> if i tell it something and it screws up it doesn't it doesn't i have to tell it i'd say correct the word uh doug and then it'll pull up doug and it'll give me option what i might have said instead okay. and then if it's not an option i say spell that and just go through it manually but with names a lot i go in and Make the name a customized word, oh, uh-huh. especially if it's a hard name. Yeah, like our buddy so Makanaka. Yeah, you'll 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 leave that in there. Right. Yeah, so you can no, have it over. That way, it'll. it'll uh, my problem is I've misspelled so many words that my autocorrect gives me misspelled words. Well, you did go. You know, questionable in El, El Reno education system. <laughs> you know, I may not have had spelling. Really. <laughs> you know, kind of been like Terry Bradshaw when <laughs> Hollywood <laughs> Henderson told him. He couldn't spell cat if you spotted the C and the T. <laughs> uh, well, I did, I, did, I did graduate with a degree in criminal justice, and we didn't have to take math or English, I'm pretty sure, for that. So. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if, if, you, if you guys ever have a chance to meet my buddy Az, I, he looks like he's special forces. You know, he's got the, the got menacing the beard and bald head. Bald head and, well, well, the bald head was, uh, it was my attempt to uh because i was going bald i mean i just had to get ahead of it so i did that and then the right. beard just came recently 
I, mean, I haven't had that yeah. for a couple of years. So. Right, but it it works. I mean, it works. Yeah, yeah. I can I can do it, but for guys that can't, it's awesome. But yeah, technology is so important. I I really uh, to be able to type at the closer to the rate of thought oh, uh-huh. is really intoxicating, and I, that's why I want you to to try the uh, try the detail and and the the iPhones and stuff now. That technology is very similar, so uh, yeah, it's a good way to, to test stuff too. I know that uh, I also have an Amazon uh, Echo. Oh, okay. And uh, it's Those got pretty, the pretty neat too. It's got the Alexa girl, you know. Yeah. I say Alexa, uh, you know, turn the lock the doors, like buy smart locks, or Alexa, uh, give me a weather report or a news update. Uh, and so I've been playing. A, with that for about oh, a couple of years and it's pretty impressive now it's android based instead of apple yeah. based but it's still very impressive to us yeah it is we, we have, uh, my son uses it all the time so uh yeah okay. but you know that's one of those things we get stuck in whatever we do and we've talked about that oh yeah you know I but mean, D- Doug's didn't. he just fixed his chairs over the years you just did your own repairs yeah, yeah we just you know if it needed Okay, we'll weld that or put a bolt in. Or yeah, something, yeah. Know? So that's just that, that's a generational oh. thing for sure. Oh yeah. There's not. There's well, no it doubt helps. about it. I mean, we're on a farm. We live on the farm. Yeah. That, so you, that's what you that, had to do yeah, out that's there. That's what you know. You know, we had welders. We had stu- had that stuff. Yeah, you know? farming ingenuity. Yeah. You bring the tack welder in and yeah, fix the yeah. chair. That's exactly yeah. right. So, yeah, that makes sense though. It so, does, and it and it's cool too. It is cool. Though. It's very cool. It's cool to be able to know to do all that. We've become so disposable with everything mm-hmm. we do today. It's 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 unfortunate because it would be a good to have a mix because technology is wonderful, but it's it would be great for people to not be so wasteful on certain things if if they could. But you know, not everybody can be tech, but you know we still need people to build houses. We still need people. Oh, to right. right. Like you know all that all that manual stuff. You know. It's, do, you, do you have a lot of um, modifications to the home? No, not a whole lot. Um, we've got a ramp going up from outside the front door you know that um sam trent who is a welder built for yeah. us <laughs> you know yeah. so somebody in the community yeah 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 that's cool built for me and you know we took um put double doors into my bedroom uh we modified the bathroom for me to get in but we don't hardly ever use it and uh recently we well, we're just doing some mom's doing some remodeling she took a uh, closet off the end of the hall there so a little more direct access straight into my room. But other than that, we haven't modified anything. You know, I've just yeah. do what, you know, I've, I've, I've made myself do, learn to do things, you know. Do you, like, do you use a uh, Hoyer lift or anything like that? Hoyer lift. Got a Hoyer lift. Um, I uh, guess we better say what that is. Uh, yeah, you should because everybody's in that way. Basically, it's a hydraulic lift, I guess is how I'd describe it. Yep, that's right. It's you know, it's just like a jack on a car just a lot bigger jack and has a overhang and whoops there we go okay has an overhang you know a long arm that stretches out yeah. with a little loop in it and then you can put different things and it has you know different car- carriers for whatever well, it's just you know. basically to transfer you yeah. yeah it's just transfer you know yeah. it, it's a it's a just a manual you jack it yourself now. They've got electric ones now, right? That are you know, and all that stuff. But that's a lot of high dollar, yeah. Stuff, you know, well, and I find that the the problem with the electric ones are uh, what I've noticed over the years is they're wonderful for lots of reasons. But those hydraulics are very easy to do. I mean, super easy. Yeah. Um, but the the as soon as the batteries go dead on a electric, you're without you're, anything. Yeah, and that happens way more often than the hydraulics yeah. that go out on the. You know, my only experience with the Hoyer lift. You know, my favorite, my favorite city, and I've had the good fortune of seeing a lot of this great country through my work. My favorite city for access, for wheelchair access, is Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. And uh, uh, in Las Vegas, they have levels of handicap accessible rooms. You want one regular with the doors widened and the grab bars, or do you want the fully accessible 
with the power curtains on the window. Oh, right. And the Hoyer track throughout the whole room. The, the track up so, in the ceiling. So I got one of those one time, and I drove my wife crazy. I was just riding around the room, <laughs> riding that thing all over. I could go from the bed to the commode on that thing. It was like uh, uh, flying through the air. And were I, you, but were you drinking when you were doing that? No. Comment on that. Uh, <laughs> There may have been libations. I'm not sure. <laughs> but, yeah, that I was really impressed that with That sounds like a scene out of Hangover or something. Yeah. <laughs> that first time, it's like, whoa, is this thing going to hold me? You know, it's so cool, you know, getting the transport like that. So, yeah, I, I recommend that. Shout out to Sin City for being what's your friend. And the fact that I can kick anybody off of any gaming table that I want to play at. Like, hey, buddy, you're out of here, man. I got my to, turn. My turn. Uh, the, really that because way? you're in a wheelchair? Yeah, they just wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> you can bump people, so wow. I thought that was so cool. Yeah, but uh, they probably don't think it is. Yeah, the person getting bumped doesn't, doesn't like it. Yeah, probably. no, not usually. But hey, they don't put up with nothing. Man, those those pit bosses will get you out of there yeah. because of problems. Well, see, my new thing thanks to the sea elevator. My dad was always telling me his favorite game was was craps, which I never got to play because well, I couldn't see over the table. The table. But with the elevator, I can see over the table. I just tell the tell the guy running the table that I want. This is my thoughts on the next few bets, and he would keep. He'll my, do it for you. Yeah, he would keep them lined up the way I want them, and I I had the best time. I got so lucky one night, and I t- I turned a hundred dollars into nineteen hundred dollars, and uh, next time it was two o'clock in the morning. My wife calls me and says, "Are you going back to the room?" And I said, "Yeah," and I'm bringing. 1,900 of my friends with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my dad actually had to, had to talk me into trying the craps, but I was so glad I did. Of course, I've never been lucky like that again. It was beginner's luck, but but uh, that was a fun time in Las Vegas. Did you uh, report that on your taxes? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Uncle Sam, wait, I wait, did. Wait, hold on. What year was that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, that was uh, the 1600 and something, uh, pre, pre-America, I think. But what a great time that was. And, and uh, also getting to uh, the Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys open the season that year in the Big Apple in New York. And I took some of those winnings, and I bet on the Cowboys to win this game, <laughs> which is perfectly legal in Las Vegas. Legal. In Las Vegas. <laughs> And I uh, went up to the window there, and I was I said, I want the Cowboys uh, plus Cowboys on the money line, which means no points. Cowboys were the underdog. I declined the points. I wanted them on the money line, and then I wanted to take the under, under 46 total points. And I want to package those two things together. And the guy says, okay, and he, I'm struggling to get my wall, my bill fold out. And the guy says, hey, son. In Las Vegas, you got to pay when you place a bet. This ain't like where you're probably from. I said, hey, buddy, I'm handicapped here. Give me a second to get my damn bill phone out. I know I got to pay you. So, And I ended up watching the game at the Golden Nugget where I was staying. And it, I didn't know it was the headquarters for the damn New York Giants Las Vegas fan club. <laughs> so I'm watching the game in a Cowboys jersey, New York Giants fan club. But we won, and I, man, I made those guys feel it. I made sure everybody in there knew the Cowboys Atta won boy. that game. That a boy. So it was. And a, did you win the bet? I did. It, we won straight up, and the total was under forty six. It's one of those uh, low scoring thirteen uh, ten ones or something. Yeah, something like that. You know, uh, um, but it it was a great night. It was a great night, and of course, we ended up disappointing ourselves later in the year. Tony Tony Romo for all his great stats, he was. He would always pick the worst time to break our hearts, you know. And we wish him well with CBS this season. Mm-hmm. Oh, is he there? I didn't know that. Yeah, he's CBS he, broadcast. He was smart. He went to TV. Yeah, that's yeah. good, though. <laughs> he, he wanted to walk in life. Yeah, uh, wow. right. That's exactly right. We talk about that. Those guys are for sure tabs. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, that's my new thing, tabs. Temporarily able-bodied. <laughs> that's what I call them. guys yeah. like ass standing around and stuff. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. Just a matter of time. <laughs> right. This is a matter of time. So we need to go back just a little bit. So you came back home. You stayed. You're there with your parents, living there. What What else have you adjusted to? I mean, what are things? You're still going to sporting events, it sounds like. You're still doing well, stuff. Well, you know, for a while I wasn't. 
You're you just staying I, there. I just stayed home. I did, like I said, I got to a point I didn't want to go anywhere. You know, um, my sister-in-law, she was coaching at Westmore High School at the time. She was an assistant. And, you know, it was. I just didn't feel like going, but I also, I, when I was doing it, I was thinking, okay, because mom and dad would go, and I said, that'll give them some alone time away from me. Right. So they didn't, you know. Right. So, But anyway, but when her team, she said. Did you when, just not enjoy it? Were you not enjoying it? Is that it? The mental Not state? enjoying it, but my body ached. My butt hurt from, you know, just like from all the swelling. Yeah. Inflammation. And so I didn't enjoy sitting in the chair. But so when you change your diet, it's when you change. Yeah, I changed my diet, you know. I got um, on some what they call noni juice. You ever heard of that? No. Okay, it's a South Asian plant in all the, you know, they plant, the uh, Polynesians and stuff would plant it when they came to a new island. It was their religious plant. Everything revolved around it. They did everything with it. But anyway, it's around 70% as effective as morphine and pain relief. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so I started taking that but. And he had a couple on the show that was talking their noni juice. And I started, got some of that and started taking that. And it, it took a little while to take hold, but it, it took away a lot of the, a lot of the inflammation and pain and a lot of, you know, and, and I stayed on that for quite a while. And then I did some other, th- you know, some other supplements trying to do things. And it's just been a learning process over these last 16, 17 years of doing it, you know, now I know that my uh, my now, be- my okay. my best friend is a doctor, and uh, he's what they call he well he's an ear, nose, and throat surgeon, but he's also what the, the new thing they call it is integrative medicine. Okay, meaning that he uh, he he's duly duly versed in in some of the things like you're talking about, as well as the traditional Western med- yeah, so medical ho- approach, holistic. Yeah, yeah, more holistic. Now, because you probably don't have a doctor that's integrated medicine certified, do you have trouble when you go to the doctor locally around here to say, t- tell them some of what you're, what, what well, you're taking today? One, I don't go to a doctor. I you mean, I, I'm, do, I'm not, I don't, I'm not sick, so I never go to a doctor. Right. The only time I have to go to a doctor is because, to get my prescription refilled once a year. You know, other than that, I don't go to a doctor, you know. You're, you're relatively healthy. You know, yeah, I'm relatively healthy. You know, I've had to go for some things, you know, getting a toenail taken off or there was some things, you know, mom wanted yeah. him to look at. But, you know, I just, you know, you know, they asked me, you want the flu shot? No, I don't want the flu shot. Yeah. You, know, you want a colonoscopy? No, I don't want a colonoscopy. You know, yeah. any of that stuff, you know. Right. So, you know, we, we're just not people that go to a doctor. Right. You know, my mom is 79 years old and she, She's never been on medication except when she had this thing and she's got off of it now, you know, and they couldn't yeah. believe. I mean, they said, you know, she said, well, how many 79 year olds you really saw the hospital that don't take medication? Yeah. No. You know, most of them are on five, 10, 15 pills at least. And they don't have a clue right. what those pills do to each other, you know? Yeah. Well, well, you don't, you don't see, I mean, I, I've been in the industry for over 20 years and around spinal cords, a whole bunch. I have to say that while I have, it is rare for me to meet somebody that's 30 years post an injury. Okay. Because a lot right. of them have so many complications. Of, you know, I've, I've known a, a ton of them who have, have lost over the years, a lot of respiratory issues, et cetera, et cetera. But it's a compounding of everything. It's not just mm-hmm. one thing, you know. But literally, the health of their, you know, so many people just – just in, in the whole United States, it doesn't matter if they're injured or not. They just eat terrible. Yeah, they eat ter- you know, they're drinking five, six pops a day. Yep. They're having right. hamburgers, pizza, you know, that that's all grain and sugar. Yep. You know, because our body converts grains to sugar. And so this, this is called, I mean, and he uses science, you know, stuff to back, you know, our corn supply in America is universally contaminated with fungal mycotoxins. That's poisons. So... You're going to get a little bit of, when you get something with corn, you're going to get a little fungal mycotoxin poison in you. And some people, you can go for years and never affect you. Slowly, right? Yeah, and it's just slowly killing you, you know. They put out right. little biofilms in your 
body and turn, you know. So you may, if you're eating at home, is it mainly meat, meat, vegetables, vegetables basically it? Yeah. You know, um, bear, like on, for breakfast, every other day I have three eggs, a couple of pieces of bacon and some vegetables. And the next day I'll have some berries or a green apple and some nuts and coconut mixed together. You know, dried coconut. Coconut, not to sweeten, not the stuff that you buy at United or right. Walmart or whatever. I get, uh-huh. I get stuff better. Stuff piled in with sugar. How many of our listeners know what United is, by the way? <laughs> uh, yeah. United's not even around anymore, are they? That's exactly right. That's not showing my age there. <laughs> but um, anyway, so, you know, you know, you, and I don't eat peanuts. Peanuts are also a bad mycotoxin fungus. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, they're also they're a legume, but they grow on the ground. And they got, you know, when you get... Some of them, the little black inside, mm-hmm. and you get that little funky taste. Guess what you're getting? A little mold there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, for the most part, you know, our immune systems do a great job, but you're constantly, when you eat sugar, it takes your immune system down for about five hours, they say, just a teaspoon. Wow. wow. So if you're constantly doing that, you know, and, you know, we've got great immune systems, or otherwise we'd be a lot sicker than we are. Right. You know, so we take, but as you get older, things start changing, you know, and basically that, that so, fungus is in so there to do you basically do, recycle you back to the earth. Yeah. Do you do, uh, do you have a, uh, supplements that you take? I heard the don't eat juice, but what else do you? Well, it just depends. When I first started, I, you're trying to, I got on some natural antifungals, garlic, olive leaf extract, um, yeah. anything garlic and olive leaf. That's great. Oregano oil is a great one, man. Really? Yeah. That first time I took, I had ordered a bottle of that and it was liquid. And I took, you put a drop on your tongue. And I mean, within a second, I could feel it in the fingertips of my, and all the way down to my toe tips. I mean, it just, whoa. And like, wow. wow. You know. When you say feel it, do you mean a boost of energy or what? Yeah, just a, I don't know what you, tingly sensation, I guess is what yeah. you call, call it. You know, something that's not normally there, and all of a sudden, wow, you know, something's going on there. And, uh, and the premier brand is North American Urban Spices, who first one I got. There's some others. Now they're just as good, but this stuff is so potent, you have to cut it with another oil, like olive oil or coconut oil. It's, it's basically, if you take it raw, it's like battery acid. Wow. It's that strong, you know. It comes in the high mountains of Turkey and stuff that's grown up there, and all these rocks and it's a i mean they they just have it there in those countries and it's in 50 gallon barrels it's open and they never think nothing you know it's oh. just it's some powerful stuff that's the oregano oil right that's oregano oil um there is also uh apple cider vinegar is a great one yeah that, I've heard that's been that. a bit of a hot topic lately yeah huh? feels like you know so you want to get good apple cider vinegar non-pasteurized Bragg's is probably the premier ba- brand with the Oh, mother of pearl, whatever they call it, in it, yeah. floating around in it. Do, do you use that on a regular basis? Not a regular basis. You know, if you're going to do it, you you do it for, you say you take like two separate ones, um, take them for a month, then you need to rotate because the fungus will, you know, it'll adapt because gotcha. it's going to try to survive. Right. So, yeah. so you have to adapt. And then sometimes I've gone months, you know, I don't stay on it constant, you know, and Here's the thing, you know, I try to stay to the diet as best I can. There's times you can't. Sure. You just go ahead, whatever, you know, Christmas time, Thanksgiving. Right. You know, have your time, but don't beat your ups, beat yourself up about it. Just get back on the next day or whatever. Or yeah, that's yeah. impressive, though. You know. Do you do any, uh, um, the, uh, the krill, the fish oil type Chris, stuff? Yeah, I've done the krill oil. That that was a good one because I'd taken fish oil quite a bit and that really helped. And then I took some krill oil. See, krill oil has the ability to pass the blood brain barrier. And I, first time I took some of that, I could feel things going on up, you know, up in there. Yeah. Huh. So I mean, yeah. it's one of the things I, I'm sort of attuned to my body when, when things do so. Well, you're probably hyper attuned to it. Yeah. To, to a degree, you know, yeah, I've, I think I've, so. I've taken some products and I'm, you know, after I've clean, basically cleaned my, body out of a lot of this stuff and you know i can well, just feel the surge through the body you know 
Wow. Yeah. Good or bad, though. One of the things that my... Most, uh, always good. Yeah. I was just talking to my best friend about this. I had a... All six months ago, I had a, a bad um, sinus infection type thing that I had trouble shaking. And he, uh, he sent me to the... And I've done antibiotics, and he sent me to the... Uh, which health food store, the litany of stuff that I had to get, and... Um, um, I can't even. I, w- I would be remiss trying to name it all off, but it, it was a bunch of stuff that uh, that he had me on, to, and and one of the things he was worried about being in the wheelchair was what he called a limbic flush. You okay. know, he felt like I really needed a limbic flush that I really couldn't get being t- as sedentary. You know, so he's right now he's toying around with the idea of how water could maybe do that, maybe have some kind of a sauna somehow for the Mm. For the wheelchair user to get what he called a limbic flush, because I couldn't get rid of the cough, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't get rid of the cough, and and uh, oh. and finally did with all these different supplements from elderberry to uh, to NAC, and I forgot mm. what NAC stands for, but NLC, uh, yeah, that, I, yeah, I can't think of the name. Anesthetic, uh, uh, yeah, anesthetic cysteine, or uh, I'm still actually. Uh, Using that because he said that that was really good for the respiratory. I think respiratory is like, like a big culprit for people with wheel in wheelchairs. You know, respiratory. Well, any, <clears throat> yeah, you can you can definitely say that. It, the one you're you're more sedentary. You're not upright, and when your body's upright, it does make a difference to be upright. Right. But but um, yeah, for sure, and especially depending on your population. But when you talk about somebody who spinal cord injury, or you talk about somebody who might have MS or certain things. Cerebral palsy. Yeah, yeah. yeah but and, they, they and can a, affect some of the same things, which which would go back to your respiratory. And acetylcysteine is what the That's NSC called. is. Yeah. And it, what does it stink, by the way? Golly. Well, uh, one thing that you're touching on that I think is something we could do a whole show on it because you know, we're starting to run out of time here, but is that a, aging with a, with a handicap. Right. I mean, it's something that we don't talk about. But, you know, like um, range of motion get, starts to lose that. You, you have normal aging processes that you just get from age. But then you compound yeah. that when you have a spinal cord injury or you have CP or whatever your handicap is. Right. You're compounding right. those things. That, by me doing this diet and some of the things I've done, my range of motion has actually gotten better. Uh, you, you, my, my muscles and everything are looser. Than you, you probably have reversed your aging. To a degree, yeah. Uh, there's yeah, no, there, I would agree. Well, there's no doubt about it. Most people, your your level of injury again, remind me, Doug. I'm C3, sorry. I think. They weren't never sure, you know, but C3, 4 could have been, even been, 2 could have been affected at the time. They don't know for sure. Sure, yeah. So you're around that level. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he has uh, uh, the ability to use your left arm mm-hmm. for the most part, and it's gross movement. You don't have any fine no, motor. No, no fine motor. So no fine motor. Nothing on the right side. No. I can just move at, at the shoulder. I can try and move just you know. a little bit. So your right side was affected more than your left. Yeah, it, you know, it, like I said, it didn't come back like my left side. But so what? What I would, what I'm trying to convey to the listeners is, lots of times when I would meet a spinal cord injury, and certainly a spinal cord injury that might be uh, 30 years post, there would be either there would be lots of times uh, weight overweight um, from, yeah. from their diet, or they'd be just the opposite. They'd be very unhealthy on the small side, yeah, which is right. a whole different issue. Yeah, to, right. To do. But you you have you have good tone in your muscle. You have, I mean, you really can tell that you're doing something to take care of yourself. Yeah. It's, obviously, yeah. it's diet. Well, I will say this: your everything starts in your gut. Yeah. It determines whether you're overweight, underweight. It controls your brain, whether you're happy, sad, all that. In you got. And lo- most people have what they call dysbiosis of the gut. It's, you know, or a leak, what they call a leaky gut syndrome. Where you little, you know, they'll test you, allergy test, and says, well, you're allergic to this and this. And, you know, well, you're allergic to peanut butter. Well, it may not be that you're allergic to peanut butter. You're probably allergic to the mold on the peanut butter. Most people are. But it shows up in the bloodstream because you've got a leaky gut. Because these poisons, this fungus... They got little sharp little things, and they can poke holes in 
your intestinal wall. And give it to the rest of your body. And then get, gets into the bloodstream, and then it shows up. Yeah. You're, you're allergic to milk or stuff. Now, you know, I do. You know, I used to drink a lot. I grew up on cow's milk, milk there at the farm for a while, and then we started buying milk from the store. You know, and I noticed that I was had a lot of mucus, you know, yeah, in my nose and stuff, you know. And I cut out dairy. That's another thing you cut out. And damn, I love cheese. Though. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, here's the thing: you, the diet is designed. You do try it for a month, and if your symptoms go away, you know you're on to something. That's right. Yeah. And so you start from there, you know, and you can hurry up the diet if you can find some doctor that'll prescribe nice statin, which is an ant- gut antifungal. Can't doesn't harm or anything, just takes out the bad. And Diflucan, which Diflucan started out as an AIDS drug. And then it became the uh, one pill vaginal yeast thing. So yeah. if all it does is kill fungus, what was AIDS? Mm. Fungus. Interesting. You, you just have to yeah. think. You have to think in terms like that. You well, know. I think we may have found the guest for our alternative medicine. We need, uh, it needs to come back for that. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to dig back for that. Yeah. Uh, if, the, if the pharmaceutical company don't take him out, <laughs> we know, uh, man. He's, they're, 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 they're too entrenched. They're it? not worried about me. <laughs> no, <it's okay. laughs> now, there's, there's some people that supposedly have disappeared because of certain yeah. things they were doing. Certainly. Could. Vaccines. Or uh, one. Yeah. Uh, right. I need to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, Doug, I want to invite you to go check out. Well, you know, JP can send you all the information on the okay. yeah. on the stuff. But I want to invite you to go look at that, kind of see what we're doing. It's kind of cool that you didn't even look at that. You just hey, I want to come talk. Heck yeah, I'll come. I love it. Yeah, we'd love for you to check us out. Subscribe to our well, hey, but also also join us. Yeah, no, for sure. That like if you're going to do something, keep in contact with JP. I know you guys do talk some, but like. And also make some recommendations because you're a part of the population that we're, we want to bring people who are able-bodied JP's tabs and the right. handicap world together. We want to break all the barriers with sledgehammers as JP said. Right. We want, we want to, to remind people that we are, we are one unit in this world and we're all moving toward being the best version of ourselves. And you have really brought so many new things the table that we it want is. to kind of run with yeah i know it is it's, it's just an interesting because one you, you, um uh the years that you've been injured and then you bring a perspective that to be honest we haven't had in this room yet mm-hmm. right yeah you know, we just hadn't hadn't talked to anybody that's been that time period but you bring a whole bunch of other things to the table that we didn't even know we we're going to talk about i mean that. right mm-hmm. now the first thing i'm thinking of is why isn't this guy doing his own podcast on health <laughs> i know he's got good stuff issues. it's exactly well, I mean, I don't have to. I mean, you know, Kaufman does a real good job. It on his. You can go to his website, knowthecause.com. He's got the diet up there for free if you want. He's got books if you want to buy them and read them. Well, you, we, JP, you might. He puts out a show every, you know, Monday through Friday. Get a message, and we'll 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 put we'll put that on the down below in the we will we the will. link to it so mm-hmm. everybody will have it. He, yeah, he it, it changed my life. Well, that's good. But I want when you after you look at everything that we've done and okay. all the stuff you do. Um, give feedback to let okay. JP know give Certainly. some feedback of like hey this would be cool for you guys to do or okay. you know yeah. whatever those things are we're going to do some do you, football do do, games and yeah and we're so. definitely going to be heads of sporting events uh, Sooners Pope yeah. uh, Dallas yeah. we're yeah. going to be trying to, trying to check out a lot of stuff we're going to be we, we travel around locally and check out different places so. and let me tell you you've got an open invitation to ride in our posse yeah. okay yeah, Thank we you. love for yeah, we need to do it. Need to make a day, make a day out of it. We yep. just went to uh Caden was our last guest and he's he's a spinal cord injury from he was on a boat and you, you'll hear that story mm-hmm. if you go listen to it. And uh well, then we met Caden out and Josh, who's a spinal cord injury from a four by four uh, well, a three wheeler. Three wheeler accident. And we met both of those guys out at the Looney Bin on Wednesday night. And uh we, we have a vlog coming up on that, but we just Looney Bin Comedy Club. Yeah, I had a great time. Had a great time. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good that night. Good. It was a good night. Yeah, let's do it. Let's uh-huh. get. Let's get out there and, and uh, definitely have a have you back more than once. You're gonna be a regular on this show. <laughs> yeah, I I really appreciate you coming, Doc. Well, enjoyed you. it.
Yeah, it's mm-hmm. fun. It really did. Right. Yeah, the time goes so fast when you're just sitting it's there, a, when you're mm-hmm. sitting there talking about fun stuff. So. All yeah, right. it's amazing. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Well, thank you, All guys. Right. Just keep on doing what you do. Keep on doing what you do. Doing what you do. Doing what you do. Doing what you do. Doing what you like. Just keep on doing what you do, doing what you do.